Hey everyone, I am super excited that my daughter-in-law, Charlene Nelson, is joining us today. Now she's married to our son Brent and they gave us two beautiful granddaughters. Now Charlene loves to write and plan content for businesses and blogs and has been published by several Christian ministries and has written content for Daryl and Friends. Now not to be biased, she really is that good. Now for many years, Charlene has experienced chronic pain and health challenges such as cancer. In her journey, she has learned how to manage and overcome chronic pain, and in the process, she lost 50 pounds. And she is a triathlete in training. So amazing, Charlene. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about your topic. I mean, you know, we've known each other for a lot of years, and Shannon and I have have seen you in those moments of chronic pain and and it's been difficult just to watch from the outside. And uh, so some of us watching are experiencing chronic pain or we have family members that have chronic pain. And I can only imagine what it feels like when you're in that moment. But it certainly hurts to watch other people go through it as well. So your topic I think is very relevant because there's a lot of people that are that need to lose weight that are experiencing chronic pain right we're saying not only do you need to change your lifestyle in terms of your diet but you need to get more mobile well how do you do that when you have chronic pain and so your title overcoming chronic pain and how to persevere and achieve your goals is amazing and i think everybody's going to want to hear your story so tell us more yeah, so it's a, it's a definitely a really big topic and the lessons that I've learned, like it took me a decade, honestly, to get a, a better handle on how to live with chronic pain and right, right. persevere and overcome. Like I wish I would have known, you know, sooner some of the things I've learned. Um, but when you first encounter pain in your life, like for me, it came on kind of out of nowhere, just this all over body pain. Um, And in the first year of experiencing that, I could not comprehend or live with the fact that potentially this pain would never go away. Right. Um, So I was searching everywhere for a cure, for a treatment, for a diagnosis, you know, a specialist anything to try and help me escape that was my whole focus is i i can't live with pain i have to escape this or i can't function that was really the what i believed in that first year struggling with it and then of course what a lot of people experience is um you go to the neurologist you have like a full body mri which i had right you do all of these tests and they don't find anything and they'll tell you you know everything looks normal but you don't feel normal right you know i remember being up in night at night so i often wouldn't sleep the whole night because my whole body would just be in pain i'd have to be having hot baths in the middle of the night and um super confusing for people to to hear like there is no reason for you to have this pain um which is generally what leads to fibrin fibromyalgia diagnosis, which is how like my journey, that was kind of the right. Same. Yeah. And you know, part, I, I remember you wrote a blog post one time and, and it was so meaningful to Shannon and I, mm. because it dealt with the fact that you're getting diagnosis, but there's no results. They're, they're not giving you any clear diagnosis. So suddenly you're thinking, how are people perceiving me? Are they believing my pain? Right? Yeah. And there's a lot of people going through the same thing yeah. where they haven't got to that point where they have a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're in this, they're in this 20 catch 22 part of their life where yeah. people see it happening, but they don't necessarily maybe believe it. Right. And, and that is huge. You know, you can, um, you can develop a lot of insecurity and things. And I think what I've talked to you about before too, Daryl, is um, because pain is something it, it's very present. And if it's new to you, it always seems to be in the foreground. Right. Eventually you do need to learn. Let's put this in the background. Um, 
But when it's front and center and, and you become in that state where I'm so desperate to, to get out of this and it's, it starts to become a big part of your identity as well. Right. Um, and once you start identifying yourself, like primarily as I'm a person who lives with chronic pain and that it almost, even though you, you dislike it, it almost becomes like this essential part of you that you feel other people need to know about it. Other people need to have compassion on me and understand. And, um, I think that's kind of a normal place to go, but in my experience, not, it can be very dangerous mm-hmm. to uh, kind of shelter yourself in it and turn that into a key part of your identity instead of learning how right. to process this and actually move forward. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that's difficult because it's, it's really, it's something you're experiencing in your body, yeah. but it's also affecting you in your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. So what at that time though, so my story is pretty long because I've gone through a lot of ups and downs with this. Um, yeah. I did get to a point during that kind of fibromyalgia stage of my life. Maybe I'd been dealing with that for like over three years. Um, where I did hit a breaking point because I, I was working in childcare and I was frequently having to call in sick because of pain, because of being up all night. And, um, I knew my, you know, my boss wasn't super happy about that. And then there was one day where I had to put sunscreen on like, you know, a row of children and just having to lean over and sunscreen the kids. I was like, I'm in too much pain. Um, and I just started crying. So I had to like go hide in the bathroom and I realized like, I can't continue like this right now. Right. Um, So I made the decision that day, I'm going to take a medical leave off work. And that was like the best decision. One of the best decisions I ever made. It actually only took me about three months to get to a way better place. I had been through a lot of stress, even aside from the pain. So, you know, taking the time to slow down, take care of myself, of my mind and my body. Um, and then also I went, there was actually a doctor from my church, Dr. Quentin Smith. If some people might know him, he went to the gym with me at the leisure center. He challenged me, got me moving. And, um, that ended up leading into which during what I would say 10 really hard years, right? I had one really good year in there and it was after that turning point. So Um, this, this, this all started before you had children. It did. This was before I had children and Gary, you know, (laughs) coming up is a whole nother trial. Yeah. Thankfully I did get that experience of overcoming by exercising. That Mm -hmm. was the biggest thing for me. And one thing that's really important for, for, uh, listeners to know. So the challenge, so if you have arthritis or inflammation, fibromyalgia, you might, you feel like you're injured. So sometimes you feel like so much pain, like, no, I'm hurting myself. If I move, I'm going to injure myself. Right. When in reality, unless you have a scan showing that you've broken a bone, you're actually not going to injure yourself by starting to move. But when you've made pain, this key part of your identity. And now you're also afraid. You're afraid if I, if I go on a stationary bike, what if I get a flare? What if I make it worse? Um, you have to learn to tell yourself, I am not hurting myself right now by starting an exercise program. Um, and yeah, you might have a flare, so you don't start crazy, but you, you learn that perseverance to start and continue and just start building. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Because when you start becoming active, your muscles are now doing something that they haven't done for maybe a very long time. Yeah. And in order for muscles to build, you, you, it's almost like you break them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then they build back. Yeah. And it's not an easy process, but you can do it safely. Mm -hmm. Baby steps. Yeah. Like I had told you when we went for coffee, like when I, well, this was later on, because like I said, I've had to reset a lot of times, but more recently, like maybe two and a half years ago, I started by just exercising on the floor, laying on the carpet, 
moving my arms like this on the carpet, you know, cycling my legs. Mm -hmm. And let's just start moving until that isn't painful anymore. And now right. we're gonna stand up and we're gonna do something. And <laughs> you know, yeah. we'll move from there. It, it could be something as simple as, okay, I've got my 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 chair here. Yeah. So I'm just going to stand up and sit down. Yeah. Stand up and sit down. Do that, do that. five times or ten times. Do it until your muscles start giving that little bit of a uh and then stop. Yeah. Even and then resume it tomorrow and the next day and do a little bit more each time. Yeah, seated calf raises. You'd be surprised. Like I'm doing them right now. You can't see. But <laughs> it's actually fairly effective. And yeah. you start just when you're sitting even watching a show. Okay, do yeah. some seated calf raises. Just start moving. Yeah. Right. So, okay. And you want me to share what comes next? <laughs> well, I, I, I love to hear the fact that you started with baby steps. Yeah. Because so many people watching this, I mean, my exercise was to the fridge and back. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah. not really. I mean, as big as I was, I was very, very active. But yeah, you not not everyone is. And the thing is, we get older, we start having joint problems and just different things, hip problems. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, we become fearful in thinking about becoming mobile because yeah. am I going to injure myself? All of that. Yeah but we can start with baby steps. Yeah. And it's only, it's about the direction that you're going, right? So really nobody's ever standing still. Yeah. Um, if you're doing nothing to improve your health in the situation you're in, you're, you're gradually going to start going backwards. Right. Um, being immobile, is never going to make you stronger. It's never going to make your pain problems better. So there's right. nowhere to go but backwards uh, from right. there. But if you are taking, like I like to say, you're improving by 1% every day. You're 1% more today and another 1% more tomorrow. Well, in 365 days, how much progress could you have made by doing that 1%, right? Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's huge. Good point. And I really am encouraged that it was your doctor friend who attends your church that really encouraged you because, um, folks, if you need to go and see a medical professional before you start, you should do it. Yeah. Make that appointment. Yeah. Um, and even if you join a gym or, or get a personal trainer, yeah. um, they will do an assessment on you to find out how mobile you really are and really where you need to start because no one wants to see you hurt yourself no. especially when you're in chronic pain already yeah yes absolutely so like the next kind of part of my journey was um when i became pregnant with my daughter adele i had kind of shortly after taking that medical leave i also switched to a job that would be easier on my body so i was just nannying for a family um right and yeah, I nannied there for over a year and then I, I got pregnant with uh, Adele. And um, so basically it, it took quite a while to actually get, and I did get diagnosed by x-rays, um, but basically during pregnancy, my pelvis, like it's normal for a, a woman's pelvis to separate up to five centimeters is normal. I actually separate, I think it was 18 or 19 centimeters. Wow yeah i didn't even know that yeah so severe pain with walking and um like turning in bed is especially excruciating so um that was a huge challenge <laughs> to say the very least and i thought so i did i had to take an early medical leave as well from that job um but i thought after i have the baby it'll heal up and I'll be okay. And so it, I, it had only been maybe two months after Adele was born. I still had a lot of pain, but I was like, I've exercised my way out of pain before. I can exercise my way out of it again. Right. Um, so I joined karate, which was a really big mistake. I <laughs> have a history in karate. I, had a, I got my black belt when I was 16. So, you know, historically I, I've always been an active person, which makes, these kind of challenges some somewhat even harder. 
Um, so karate didn't go well. I, I lasted a few months and set myself back worse. And what ended up happening was honestly a real struggle to walk for like a couple years. Um, and I did see, it was different than my first experience because I did see like an osteopath professional who basically looked at my x-rays and was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, kind of like you might, you might have pain from this forever. Um, <clears throat> so I was very determined though, to not <laughs> like accept that. Um, but what I started doing at that time, and it's not necessarily bad, um, but I started seeing a lot of different professionals, chiropractic, physio, naturopath, almost you name it, I tried it. Some really intensely painful treatments, like I tried prolotherapy, which was extremely painful, did help a bit though. Um, but yeah, I've spent a lot of money and had a ton of setbacks. I'd make progress and then I'd fall back. So that's kind of leading up to that point I've shared with you, Daryl, where I did, uh, I did actually kind of give up at right. a point. I was like, I've spent so much money. It had been like three years of trying to walk without pain. Um, and I was like, maybe this is just, I'm destined for this. I, I was like, maybe this is just how my life is and I have to stop spending money and I have to stop. Trying. And that didn't go well. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. a good yeah. decision. No. Well, you know, all of us at some point, I'd say probably 99% of us have fallen off the wagon. Yeah. And uh, I know in my case, a lot of times I never got back on because I had really had no accountability. It was just me. I was too discouraged, just, you know, all kinds of things that are going on. So it sounds like you got to a point where you had a decision where you could give up too. Yeah. But what helped you get back on the wagon? So what happened is I did give up for about six months. Okay. And I didn't get better. Of course, I started going backwards. Like I said, if right. you're not taking literal steps to move forward, you're gonna move backwards. And it was, it sounds really cheesy, but it was New Year's Eve. I was at a New Year's party. This, it really is cheesy, but literally at the stroke of midnight, I had this really strong sense that, uh, sorry, it makes me emotional. Um, you can't give up, like you cannot quit on yeah. this. And I was like, that's it. This is my year, whatever it takes, I'm gonna get over this. <laughs> yeah. So did somebody come into your life so, to help you with that? You know, it's funny because again, uh, it was the same doctor friend, Quentin Smith, him okay. and his wife came over one evening for a visit and I was telling him about my challenges and he said, well, let me watch you walk. So I, I walked and he's like, no, that's not your normal walk. Like do a normal walk. And I'm like, no, this, this is the way I walk. I didn't realize how completely off my gait was. Wow. Um, like my hips were not sitting straight, right? Like my walking really had become impaired. And, um, and then he had me try to do certain like stretch and no, I can't do that stretch. <laughs> yeah. he, no, you should be able to do this. And I'm like, no, I, I can't do it. Um, and so he was like, you know what, I'm going to refer you to like the best physiotherapist that I know, who was, uh, Greg Bay. He's been on the shark tank. Actually. Uh, he, he makes a product through under armor, which specifically is for supporting your pelvis and hips. Um, but anyways, I saw him, uh, in Abbotsford and it was absolutely amazing because, um, kind of like you said, when I went and saw him, he analyzed everything you know, march on the spot, walk, lift your knees, touch your toes, Yeah. watched the way I moved. And then, um, he looked at me with tons of compassion and he was like, how are you living like this? And it was the first time someone with medical expertise 
showed me that kind of compassion, like showed me that they saw how severe my problem was because visibly I look very healthy. Um, and people would always be like, you look fine. Right. Right. He was like, how are you living like this? And I was like, it's really hard. And he's like, how was the drive here? And I'm like, the drive here was really hard. Like I'm in pain all the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was like, okay. He's like, well, you're Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> he's like, you know, you, you basically, we need to retrain you how to walk, um, and put you back together again. And he's wow. off with such, I mean, literally I would hold a chair. I would support my weight on one leg and lift my foot an inch off the ground and try to make my hip bear that weight properly. It was right. like extreme baby steps, um, to get started with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're telling me stuff I've never heard before. You know, I mean, this is amazing folks because she's my, my daughter-in-law, you know, and sometimes, you know, even we, sometimes we don't know even what our family's going through all the time. Kind of sad actually. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it's just a lot, right? It's sometimes... We've all got such busy lives, right? Uh -huh. And during this whole time, my wife and I spent most of our time in the Philippines with our charity, Clean Water International. I remember like when Adele was born, we're like, when's she going to get born? Because I've got to go back to the Philippines. And literally, I went yeah. back the next day. You got to like oh. see her and yeah. Like, yeah. touch her head. And then you had to get on a plane. Oh yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was crazy. It was a crazy time. I know. And I did actually once brought my mom with me to an appointment with Greg and I brought Brent one time too. And he was very supportive. Um, Dr. Greg Bay, I want your family to see what you're going through. Yeah. And, and it was extremely powerful for both my mom and for Brent to yeah. have the experience of him actually showing them like, Hey, this is how, like impinged her body is. And this is the level we're having to start at. And it really helped them to understand as well. And they were both like, oh, I didn't realize like that it was this bad, okay. you know? Um, so it's very valid. That was very validating for me as well. And then it was a whole year of seeing Greg once a month and he was great. He would also take my phone calls if certain exercises weren't working and I was running into a problem, he'd take my call. Um, but it took me like a year to do a 15 minute walk without pain. Wow. That it, it took a year. So this is where the perseverance comes in, in your major, topic. <laughs> major perseverance. And it was like, it's raining. I have a giant raincoat on, like I am out there every day, rain, snow, whatever I'm walking. <laughs> yeah, and it was very valuable actually for me. It was, and that's that is, you hate to say like the beauty of dealing with chronic pain, but there is a sense in which you're gonna learn through that things that you're not gonna ever learn anywhere else. You, right. It's gonna make you a persevering person if you choose to keep showing up and keep doing the work. You're gonna become very like gritty. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, it, and it also makes you more empathetic for people who are experiencing similar problems. Oh, and so by you sharing your story today, yeah. I'm sure is helping some people watching this right now. So if somebody's in that state of chronic pain right now, yeah, and they haven't really started. Yeah. What would you say to them? Well, I think thing number one, um, Yes, seek medical attention, seek specialists, get help, get input, but, and this is hard, like it's maybe hard to hear, probably no one's gonna save you. Like I, for a long time was looking for like, just let me see that chiropractor who does crack crack one time and now yeah. I'm healed and I'm fixed. Or is there the magic pill? Cause you know how many people are selling magic pills? I can take it. It's going to heal me. Yeah. I had to learn like, yeah, I take supplements. Yes. I see specialists, but there's nobody else who's going to fix me. I have to put in the work and the yeah. dedication. 
and follow through with what I'm being told to do. So that's kind of where I would start is like with your, your mindset and your expectations. Um, yeah. Yeah. And realizing you probably thought, you know what, and I know you thought this cause you said it earlier, is this something I have to deal with for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. and, and it very well might be like, so I still have chronic pain. Like yeah. I have a, you know, a really bad shoulder for instance, I've had cortisone shots in twice. Now it always wears off after four months. I mean, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> uh, I've had to learn a, a lot about making adaptations in life. Yeah. Instead of saying, I'm not able, for instance, to yeah. use a computer, which for a long time I said, I can't use a computer. My wrists, my shoulders, my everything hates it. I had to learn, I'm gonna do everything ergonomic. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna take frequent stretching breaks. I'm gonna yeah. find yeah. ways, right? Yeah. Because yeah. ultimately, your motivation is you wanna achieve your goals. Yeah. Right. Mobility is a huge thing. I mean, you've got two daughters. Yeah. 10 and five, right? Right. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah, right. She just turned six. And I know, it's remember. crazy. Um, and so just, you know, running after kids, we need our mobility. Yeah. But there's folks out there who are empty nesters who are getting on in their life. Yeah. And they're getting to a point where they need hip replacements or they need yeah. knee replacements or yeah. they might be confined to a wheelchair or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So w what's your goal? What's your goal? You know, is it yeah. playing with your grandchildren or your children? Is it mm -hmm. just being mobile so that you don't have to go into a retirement home so you can live and, you know, in, in your own place? I mean, yeah. we have to have goals. Yeah. We all do. Those motivating factors are definitely going to be different you know, for every person, yeah. um, for sure. And I mean, a big one, I think that probably everyone has in common is just like, you want to feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody yeah. wants to feel crummy all the time. Right. Exactly. Uh, right. But, yeah. There's a lot yeah. that goes into that. So, um, I guess if I share, you want me to share some more of my story? Yeah, absolutely. It's a never ending story. <laughs> Oh goodness. It's been a, it's been a long road. Uh, so <clears throat> I got pregnant with Liza when Adele was three. Now the timing was hard because I just gotten to the point. Actually, I did get to the point where I was walking completely without pain and walking like as much as I wanted to walk without mm -hmm. pain, a miracle. I thought this will never happen. And right. I actually got there. So that was huge. But then you're pregnant again and it was tough. I was obviously thrilled. We've been trying for over a year and it was God's timing that it took over a year because I needed to experience some success. Just going from trial to trial to trial without a little bit of success in there. Like, thank God for that. Cause it, it helps a lot. Yeah. Um, I knew this is going to be really hard. The, the pregnancy was going to be really hard and the pain started a lot earlier. Like, I think it was only two months. Um, it's same as with the first pregnancy when it hit the initial hit of whatever it is that happens in my body with my pelvis separating is the worst moment of the whole thing. Like it's like just out of nowhere. Okay. I feel like my pelvis broke. So I was literally crawling on the floor, like absolutely horrible. Went to the hospital, and again, it's, it's tough. It's like, we don't know what we're going to tell you, but here is, uh, your prescription basically to go pick up a walker, go pick up a wheelchair, go pick up like, I don't know, all these tools. It was like, it was real. It was like, this is going to be a really hard journey again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So those, those nine months of pregnancy, I will say they were the hardest time of my life because all I could do was try to maintain what I had. You can't be making progress like in that state. I did see uh, Greg Bay through the whole pregnancy and he was very encouraging, but he was very realistic. Um, it was about trying to maintain the best way possible, but for the most part I had to rest and 
I had to be like reclining because even sitting with my feet on the floor was very painful. The only way I wasn't in pain was to sit, recline. <laughs> right. so, it was extremely limiting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was so, so here, here you are now, six yeah. years later after yeah. that pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, you're a triathlete in training. That's your goal. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And you're doing this in yeah. spite of even still being in chronic pain. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, having yeah. to learn to manage it on your level, yeah. um, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, is encouraging because people can do this. Yeah. Baby oh, steps. It doesn't happen overnight. Obviously in your story, it didn't happen overnight. It okay. happened and then bang, you're back and then it's still happening. So much, so much grit needed. Uh, that it's ridiculous. And I mean, I think that's why I don't share my story a lot because I do think my story can be overwhelming, to be honest. So, you know, when Liza was two months old, then I, I, uh, passed out in the middle of the night and Brent couldn't wake me up. Um, so I had to go to the hospital, I had to call 911, had to get a blood transfusion. And then it was a whole nother journey. Uh, took a year to get yeah. with a uh, stomach tumor took six months to have surgery on and on it goes. Right. I mean, just rough, but once again, you know, once thank the Lord, I have been cancer free for almost five years. Wow. Amazing years in, uh, in May, which yeah. is amazing. Um, but I think going through that, you have so much appreciation for life, right? Yeah. Because I remember in those moments, not knowing how is this going to go? Like my, my one prayer was please God, I need to get both my children to kindergarten. I just, if I can walk them both to kindergarten, yeah. they're yeah. going to be okay. I don't know why that was just, that was the feeling I had. I have to get to that milestone. Um, and then I think that getting them both to kindergarten um, and pushing through all of this stuff, I was like, it's time. Once again, we're going to focus on on uh, me and how am I doing? And, and yeah, I had gained a lot of weight um, because going through all that stuff was so extremely hard. So, you know, you eat, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So I had a lot of weight to, to lose and I still had a lot of chronic pain to uh, overcome and like, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome though. It's been a really good couple of years. So would you say your focus, you just talked about your weight loss. Yeah. Um, was your focus on your weight loss or was your focus on just dealing with your chronic pain and getting mobile and in doing so between changing your eating habits and everything else, the weight loss just kind of came naturally. You know, the focus was health in general, right? Everything. It was mental health spiritual, physical, um, the whole nine yards, I needed an overhaul <laughs> in basically every area. Yeah. So, um, I really paid attention to that. And I mean, the mental health is a whole nother thing I could talk about because I had some massive struggles there and had to seek medical help in, in that arena too, which like, honestly, if you're struggling with depression and anxiety and it's going on for years, best decision I ever made was to seek medical help. Uh, I wish I'd done it sooner. Mm -hmm. I found, yeah. I found freedom and I was able to, um, do activities with joy again. I remember on my walks, I always, always kept my walks, no matter what I was going through. If I could walk, I walked right. Cause walking yeah. was a major victory for me. <laughs> the fact that I could go for a walk. Yeah. But, um, I had always I had this war mentality from all the things I've been through. So walking was war in my mind. This is how I fight back against all the things that are trying to take me down. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to do this, but it was always, I don't know how to describe it. Um, just intense. Right. And I remember after I started healing, mentally, emotionally focusing on, um, eating right and doing all those things. I remember the first time I was walking 
And I realized I was happy and I wasn't thinking about all the things that had happened to me. Right. That had very very, cool. wasn't thinking about those things anymore. I was enjoying my walk. <laughs> it wasn't like, this is a war and this is a battle and I'm going to win. It was like, Oh, look at the trees and like, you know, yeah. enjoy enjoying it. the journey and not just the destination. Yeah. 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 It That's was. awesome so much better and finding things i enjoyed so like riding bike was huge because i really enjoyed it so mm -hmm. yeah with exercise you want to find something that's fun for you i think ideally that that'll help you to do it because it's not just to exercise it's also to, to have fun right exactly yeah. exactly um you know charlene we're at the end of our time here i love your story Folks, I can tell you the difference in Charlene is night and day. Yeah. Absolutely. We are so blessed. We have beautiful grandchildren, awesome parents of them. We love them so much. Uh -huh. And yeah. uh, I know this journey is not over. It will be forever. Just like, you know, oh, yeah. hey, I lost 200 pounds. But guess what? When I look in my fitness pal, my weight still goes like this. It's still oh, a yeah. battle. Me it too. will be for the rest of our lives. But, you know, if we can do this together... Yeah. With a support system. Yeah. You had a doctor that cared enough about you to say, hey, let me see you walk. Yeah. Um, seek medical help. Seek people who are professionals in the areas that you need help. Mm -hmm. You don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to do this alone. No. That's why people like myself, coaches and groups, there's groups out there that you can join and be a part of. You really need to find your tribe. You need to find a community that can support you and help you in your journey. Yeah. Now, I know you can do it. Charlene's done it and she'll continue to do it. Yeah. And we're blessed. So Charlene, thank you so much for taking this time with us. All right, and thank you, Darryl. Folks, thank you for watching. And uh, you can follow Charlene, okay? How can people get in touch with you? Okay, I have two different Instagram accounts that you might be interested to follow. One is uh, called Run, Bike, Drown. And that is inspired by my triathlon training. Yeah. And I still haven't completed a triathlon. I can, I completed half a one, but I am always learning and adapting still. So yeah. yeah, it's a continuing journey. And then my other Instagram account is my business, Charlene Writes. Um, so you can connect with me there. Yeah. Great. And we'll put the links in the, in the chat area. Sure. And for all those who have, who have the all access pass, it'll always be in there as well. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Charlene, and thank you, everyone, for watching, and have a wonderful day. Okay, thanks. Bye.